Hello again. Continuing my comeback with videos in a completely different order from what I was intending. A couple days ago, Captain Awesome unintentionally scooped me on a subject that I was planning to do a video on, and he basically took a position diametrically opposed to what I was going to say. So I'm going to start out with some comments about his video and then go into the video that I was intending to make in the first place. I was going to do a video recommending to my subscribers, especially the atheists, that they subscribe to the Young Turks YouTube channel. And then Captain Awesome did his video, The Young Turks Braying Stupid Hypocrites. So <laughs> clearly there's a difference of opinion here. Now, um, obviously we can agree to disagree on our uh, reaction to the Young Turks, but I think there were some errors of fact in uh, Captain Awesome's video that are worth mentioning. They've uploaded some 1600 videos to YouTube. I mean, holy shit, that's some sort of like record for not having a life outside of YouTube. Brett Keen's Mr. Activity compared to them. I'll just point out the obvious, which has been pointed out in, in the comments to Captain's video. Uh, this is a professionally produced show, so uh, they do have a life outside of YouTube. Uh, they actually get paid to do this. Uh, do they get paid uh, Bill O'Reilly money? Rush Limbaugh money? Hell no. But uh, they're in a different category from Brett Keen and Captain Awesome and me. But anyway, the amount of videos they make isn't what I want to talk about. It isn't what's annoying about these guys. These guys are a liberal talk show. The Young Turks show is actually one Young Turk, Cenk Uger, who's the permanent host on the show. Uh, it's his baby and a series of guest hosts. They used to have a real radio show on Air America. And then they got fired from Air America, which is sort of like getting kicked off the short bus for being too retarded. They fancy themselves so edgy, so like edgy. They're the opposite of edgy. They're, they're standard. This is in their description of what... <clears throat> now here's one thing that I agree with you, Captain Awesome, about. The Young Turks are not edgy. They're about as edgy as the Budweiser frogs. But where I, where I differ from you is that they never claim to be edgy. They never pretend to be edgy. They're completely unpretentious about being Budweiser frog-friendly regular guys. And if there's any kind of uh, uh, twist or rebellion to their presentation, it's the idea that liberals, uh, not to mention uh, Turkish-American liberals, uh, can actually be regular guys. This is in their description of what a young Turk is. A young progressive or insurgent member of an institution, movement, or political party. And then part two, get ready for this, a young person who rebels against authority or societal expectations. I mean, I was just wondering if they're kidding about that. Or are they so deluded, are these people so deluded that they really think young people are rebelling against societal expectations by being liberal? Let me just suggest that maybe they're quoting the American Heritage Dictionary on the channel description so that all the non-Turks on YouTube will understand that there's some larger context for the name Young Turks. Oh, we're rebelling against societal expectations. No, you're not. I mean, if you want to be liberal, fine, but don't pretend that you're some fucking rebel when you're doing exactly what society expects of you. Technically speaking, they don't have to uh, live up to both of these definitions, and they certainly do live up to the definition of being progressives. So, you know, <laughs> you, can, you can take this as far as you want, but uh, uh, I think this, set, this is more about your reaction than what they're trying to, uh, what they're trying to say about themselves. Um, there's also another uh, meaning to the name Young Turks, which might actually mean something to Cenk Uger 
and uh, I'll get to that later. Believe it or not, that is not what pisses me off most about these people. The video I saw, I heard McCain had been on uh, Ellen, right? Uh, lesbian Ellen's show. And they're scoffing at McCain for being against gay marriage, okay? Oh, he's going on gay marriage against on Ellen's show. Oh, scoff against him. The whole time is a complete... <clears throat> okay, they're not scoffing at McCain specifically for being against gay marriage in that video. What they're doing is mocking McCain for not being prepared to go on Ellen's show. What's amazing about the clip you're about to see is that John McCain had to know it was coming. I mean, you had to have an answer for this prepared. Did you not prepare? Man, that's weird. That's what they're doing. Now, you can disagree with them, but your description of what they're doing is factually inaccurate. The whole time, is it completely lost on them that their savior, Obama, has the exact same fucking position as McCain. I don't know if it's lost on them. I suspect it isn't. Not even vaguely radical. Of course, progressives are largely disappointed in Barack Obama. In fact, uh, Cenk Uger makes the point, or at least asserts, that McCain is lying when he claims that he has that position, the same one that Obama has. So, by the way, he says, uh, but I'm in favor of some of the same rights, including uh, getting uh, insurance and legal agreements. And then, of course, we do research, and we find out that is entirely untrue. Watch the commercial against gay marriage in Arizona, and look at who pops up on the screen at the end there. And it's not just gay marriage. It's none of the rights that you should have in a marriage. Watch who pops up at them. One court case away from having a radically new definition of marriage. Judges in Massachusetts, New Jersey, and Hawaii have already ruled that gay marriage is okay. Arizona voters have a choice for something better. Marriage deserves to be protected. One man and one woman. Marriage is the foundation of society. It is how we raise our children, build strong families, and create strong communities. I'm John McCain. Please join me in voting yes on Proposition 107. So that gay people can't have any of the rights of straight people in regards to marriage or civil unions or whatever you want to call them. This is the evidence they show for McCain actually lying about being uh, in favor of civil unions. Now, you can agree with them or disagree with them, but the point, again, is simply that <laughs> you're, you're creating straw man arguments for hating these guys. You hate them. I, I believe you hate them. I believe they drive you crazy. God damn it, why am I so pissed off at these guys? I'm not even as pissed as I thought I would be in this video, and I thought I would be pretty pissed. <sighs> okay, on to why I was going to make a video about the Young Turks. Basically, I think that the YouTube atheist community ought to get to know Cenk Uygur. I was born in Istanbul, Turkey, uh, and I lived there till I was eight years old. Uh, and then we came over to New Jersey, and I grew up basically there. And actually, I was a Republican for a long time, and uh, the Iraq War kind of changed that. Uh, and uh, my whole family decided to be more left of center rather than right of center, just because we thought the Republicans went crazy in attacking random Muslim countries. I don't know if it's because I'm Muslim that I understood that Iraq didn't have anything to do with al-Qaeda, <laughs> that they are actually you can have two separate Muslim countries and n have them not be related. Uh, but we certainly saw that there was something very, very wrong with the Bush administration. Kamal Nawash, <laughs> the uh, founder and president of the Free Muslims Coalition, and Cenk Uger, host of The Young Turks. Dennis Prager is not only a bigot, but he's a clown and un-American. He doesn't understand the whole idea of America. The whole idea of America is religious diversity, a secular that country. May be true, but so Cenk Uger is, among other things, a flack for the so-called moderate Muslim community. And as we all know, many if not most YouTube atheists think that there's no such thing as a moderate Muslim. And this is one reason why I would like you to get to know Cenk Uger a little bit better. Because I don't particularly like being a member of a community that indulges in pseudo-scientific xenophobia. Muslims in America are 100% as American as non-Muslims. 
I know that bothers a lot of right wingers to their core. They hate that. But that's what this country stands for. That people who are Jewish, people who are Muslim, people who are Buddhist, and Zoroastrian, atheist, agnostic, it doesn't matter. And when you keep talking about how it's a Christian country, you're trying to alienate us, and I'm not going to let you do it. Uger is also a blogger on the Huffington Post, and I just want to read you uh, some excerpts from, a, from three of his blogs. It is a chilling fact that most of the world's leaders believe in nonsensical fairy tales about the nature of reality. They believe in gods that do not exist and religions that could not possibly be true. Muhammad was a pure charlatan, and a good one at that. He makes present religious frauds like Pat Robertson look like amateurs. He said God told him to have sex with as many of the women he met as possible. I'm sorry, I meant to say, take them as wives. God told him to kill all other tribes that stood in his way or that would not placate him with assurances of loyalty or bribes. God told him, conveniently, that everyone should follow him and never question a word he said. He sold this bag of goods to the blithering idiots who lived in the Arabian Peninsula at that time. If that weren't shockingly stupid enough, over a billion people continue to believe the convenient lies that Muhammad told all that time ago, to this very day. I don't know what other so-called fundamentalist atheists argue, but I am not concerned with how the world would be with or without religion. I care whether the religions are true or untrue and any non-insane, non-ignorant person can tell they are simply not true. If you are offended by the fact that your religion is made up, cruel, violent, barbaric, and ridiculous, that's your problem, not mine. If I'm right, you're living your life based on a silly lie. If you're right, I'll be murdered by your prophet and then roasted in hell for eternity. I think it's fair to say I should be the one offended. For the record, I'm not. Harry Potter is just as likely to come to life and kill me for not believing in him as Jesus Christ is. I'm not offended by your sad little fantasies, but please spare me your righteous indignation about how I hurt your feelings. Shit, that's at least as edgy as most of what Captain Awesome says. So this is Jank Uger. But wait a minute. If this is Cenk Uger, what the hell is he doing going on all those shows and saying things like this? Look, the bottom line is, we're Muslims, but we're also Americans, and we believe in America. And you should still believe in America. You still can do it. And look at us. You know, here we are. We do a show called The Young Turks, and I'm a Muslim American, and we've got... Whoa, 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 Cenk, Cenk, even atheists know that the bare minimum to be a Muslim is to affirm that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. And you clearly don't believe any of that. You are absolutely certain it's not true. So where do you get off calling yourself a Muslim? Do you really believe America is at a point where they don't make a distinction between good Muslims and bad Muslims? I I'm afraid they don't. They have, they, a new poll came out fairly recently saying 39% of Americans want Muslims to carry ID with them so they can... I mean, that scares me. That reminds me of Germany. Obviously, if I may put words in Cenk's mouth, Cenk is calling himself a Muslim the same way that Einstein called himself a Jew, even though he didn't believe that the Jews were the chosen people and he didn't believe in a supernatural personal deity. Hold on. Debbie, I want to get serious for a second, because this is beginning to piss me off. Debbie Schlussel, so I was born Muslim, right? Now I'm agnostic, so, but once a Muslim, always a Muslim. Yeah, where do your loyalties? So am I an enemy, Debbie Schlussel? Am I, or do you question my loyalties? She said, I question his loyalties, right? She said, where will his loyalties be? Okay, where are my loyalties? Do you question me? Am I a sleeper cell? Cenk is calling himself a Muslim, because Muslims are a subculture, and they are under attack, and he is defending his community, even though he doesn't believe any of the foundational beliefs of that culture. Just like the world is full of atheistic Jews, there are, or there is, I should say, at least one atheistic Muslim. 
and I would guess there's more than one. F you, Debbie Schlussel. F you and everything that you stand for, okay? I, kiss my Muslim ass, not on the left, not on the right, but right in the middle. A lot of people have asked me to do videos about Islam, and I plan to do more. This was intended to be the first one. And the overall theme of every video I do about Islam, I think, will be that it's much more complicated than ideological purist fantasies about how <clears throat> cultures uh, must be judged by the literal meaning of their texts. Why am I not afraid of Islamofascists? Look, Islamofascists, if they actually existed, would kill me first. They'd be like, okay, let's see, who do we start with? Do we start with the Jews? That's a good uh, place to start if you're Islamofascist. Do we start with the Americans? Who do we start with? No. They always start with the guys who used to be Muslim, but then aren't, right? Because I've now, you know, I don't uh, believe in Islam. I make fun of Islam. I made fun of the Prophet Muhammad. You think that they, the Islamic radicals play that game? I'm first on their list. So do I want them taking over? Hell no, man. I've got more interest than anybody else in making sure Islamic fundamentalists don't take over. They're my number one threat, okay, in the world. Now, why am I not afraid of them? Number one, it's not a real threat, man. They're not going to take over Cleveland or San Diego. They're a bunch of cave dwellers. There was a couple of hundred of them, maybe a couple of thousand of them in 2001. They're a little larger now, thanks to George W. Bush and his attack against uh, any Islamic country he could spell. And I know that list is short. <laughs> but guy comes up to you and says, no, the Islamofascists are going to take over the world and take over America. Note to self. Put that guy in the moron category. For reason number two why I'm not afraid of the so-called Islamofascists. Because they don't exist. What the hell is an Islamofascist? They made that up. Are there Islamic radicals and fundamentalists in the world? Of course there are. Are they fascist? What are you talking about? In fascism, the corporations and the states mix together to come up with one big giant state entity. What corporations? Uh, is Al-Qaeda making light bulbs and I'm not aware of it? Is Iran making cars that are going to take over the state and that are going to take over Czechoslovakia and Germany and Austria? The reason they made up the word Islamofascism is so they could link Iran, the country they want to attack next. They told us in the 90s we didn't listen. Because they want to link Iran to the Nazis. They want to kill the Jews. They want to attack Israel. They're the ultimate evil. We have to attack them before they attack us. So let's connect them. How do we connect them? Islam, 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 Islamo, Islamo. Oh, I got it, Islamo fascists. You think they didn't sit around one day at the Weekly Standard and at the American Enterprise Institute and try out different words? Islamo Nazis, Islamo Hitlerites. Third reason I'm not afraid of them? Because I'm not a coward. These neocons, oh my god, we're so scared, we're so scared! Oh my god, they're gonna attack us any moment, they're gonna take us over, they're gonna take over Europe, then they're gonna take over the US, I'm so scared! Let's change everything. Let's start torturing people, let's ignore the Constitution, let's stop being Americans. And let's attack first, first strikes, yeah, aggressive war! Just like the Germans, no, 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 we're different. They're like the Germans, we're not like the Germans. I wouldn't be doing projection at all. Earlier I mentioned that Uyghur might have his own special reason for wanting to call his channel the Young Turks. The original Young Turks were the people who changed Turkey from an Islamic state, the last gasp of the universal caliphate, into a secular semi-democracy. In other words, to be a Young Turk is to be a secularist. They were working at Target and they had a protest. And they said, no, we don't want to scan pork products while we're working with the cash register. So could you put us on a cash register where we don't have to scan pork products? He would have been my answer if I was the manager at Target. No. And, oh, by the way, you're fired. Okay. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say you're fired. I'd be like, look, no. And you have 45 seconds to get back to your post. <laughs> And it doesn't say don't handle pork products in the Quran, just like it doesn't say anything about abortion in the Bible, okay? And by the way, I would fire them a little less quickly than I would fire the, uh, uh, who would get fired uh, more rapidly, the pharmacists who won't sell the, the Plan B. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'd fire those guys in a second, because they're messing with people's health. These guys are just clowns. 
edgy words from a Muslim. All right. Anyway, so why are they pissed? What's what's going on? Why are they pissed? Well, I, I mean, I <laughs> why are the Christians pissed about that? Gee, I wonder. Let me count the ways. I I I, I think just for one, sleeping sleeping with God is is not allowed. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if they're pissed because God is black. I, I don't know. But, I mean, I think it's the whole I'm having sex with, with God that, that sort of broke the camel's back there a little bit. I, no, I don't think so. I think what broke the camel's back is that she slept with God and wasn't impressed. They're oh, like, dude. and, like, dissed him? Yeah, they're like, no. They're like, dude, if you slept with God, believe me, you'd want to do it again. Okay? I mean, don't be talking smack about God like that. If God put a licking on you, I mean, you you wouldn't, you know, you'd want to come back for seconds.